The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Now, uh, like I said, the hybrid cross is a cross consisting or that involves two pure lines or two true breeding varieties, two pure breeding P plant varieties in this case. And these varieties differ in two characters of interest that we are looking at. So for instance, on the cross we have on the screen right now, um, that's an example of a dihybrid cross between a plant with the dominant phenotype, uh, yellow round seeds. That's a dominant phenotype right there, seeds that are yellow and round and with the plant that has a recessive phenotype or has the recessive phenotype which is green wrinkled seeds. So in this case uh, the color character is represented by a capital Y for the allele for yellow color which is the dominant allele. So there's two capital Y's there in that uh, parental uh, genotype as you can see and similarly um, we have a small Y which represents green color which is a recessive allele in this case. Now likewise seed shape character is represented by a capital R as you can see we have a capital R so capital R, R will represent the round seed shape which is obviously the dominant allele and the small r will represent the wrinkled seed shape which is the recessive allele. Now during gamete formation or, or during the formation of eggs and sperm or pollen in this case, pure breeding parental lines uh, can each only produce identical gametes which carry alleles for either the dominant or the recessive phenotype respectively. So for instance, the parental line that has yellow and round seeds, so I'm talking about this parental, this pure breeding line right here, it will only produce gametes that have these dominant alleles. So have the gametes that have the dominant alleles for um, seed color, which is a yellow allele, uh, the allele that produces yellow seed color, and the dominant allele for seed shape, which is the allele, the capital R, that produces the round seed shape. Now, um, the parental line that has green wrinkled seeds will only produce gametes that have the recessive alleles, so the small y and small r right there, used to signify or used to represent the recessive traits for color and shape respectively. So, according to segregation, each of these allelic pairs will segregate into gametes. So what's happening is that when we are forming gametes, when we are forming eggs and sperm or pollen from the parental generation, each of these allelic pairs, so I'm talking about the R's, the Y's, the small R's and the small Y's, they'll all segregate into gametes. And if you will recall from the first law of segregation, two members of a gene pair, that allelic pair right there, will segregate into separate gametes. So one R will go into one gamete and another R will go into another. Similarly, one Y will go into one gamete and another one will go to another. And the same thing for the recessive uh, variety, for the recessive plant. So all the gametes that are produced by the plant that has a dominant phenotype, so the plant that has the yellow round seeds, will have the same heterozygous dominant genotype. So I'm talking about this genotype right here, YR or RY, which represents the dominant uh, genotype, the genotype that has both the dominant alleles. So both the dominant traits for seed color and seed shape. Now all the gametes that are produced by the plant with the recessive phenotype will have the heterozygous recessive genotype. That is, it will have the alleles, um, the recessive alleles for seed color and seed shapes, so a small y and a small r. So what happens when we mate this parental generation, when we cross those two varieties, when we cross those two pure breeding lines, we will get an F1 generation, a first filial generation, uh, that are dihybrid. So what we mean by dihybrid is that they are heterozygous. Okay, They're heterozygous for two characters that are being followed in the cross. And the two characters we're following here are seed shape 
and we are also following um, seed color. So these are the two characters we're following in this dihybrid cross. So the F1 plants or the F1 generation exhibit both dominant phenotypes. So all of the F1 generation or all of the F1 progeny will have yellow seeds and they will have round shaped seeds. So their seeds will have round shape and their seeds will be yellow. Now, moving on from this point on, two different hypothetical scenarios can occur. Now, in the first one, moving to the left right there, that's the first hypothetical scenario. Um, these F1 hybrids, so the F1 generation that has that genotype, can then proceed to transmit the alleles in the same combinations in which they were inherited from the parental generation. So what I mean by that is, um, the dominant alleles stay together, so the capital R will stay with the Y, and the recessive alleles will stay together, so the small Y will stay with R. So if this happens, and if um, those alleles are then passed on to the F2 generation from the F1 generation, in the same manner they were inherited from the parental generation, then you will only produce, or you'll only have two classes of gametes. So you'll have the RY, the dominant R, dominant Y, the dominant genotype right there, and the recessive genotype right there. Now, this is what we would refer to as dependent assortment. And as you can see, up to performing this cross using those gametes in a Panette grid, so crossing the all those different gametes, you will see that we will end up with a phenotypic ratio of 3 is to 1. So three of those offspring will be, or will have the dominant phenotype, so they'll have round yellow seeds, and one of them will have green wrinkled seeds. So this is what we'd expect to happen if those alleles were transmitted in the same way they were obtained from their parents. But what actually happened is when Mendel actually did this cross and he selfed or crossed the F1 generation, what he observed was actually quite the opposite. In the second filial generation, in the F2 generation, he observed a phenotypic ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. So he observed 9 uh, yellow round seeds, or 9 plants with yellow and round seeds, 3 with green wrinkled seeds, uh, 3 with yellow wrinkled seeds, and 1 with green and wrinkled seeds. And I remember this is a ratio, so that's just a ratio in which he observed those four different phenotypes. So how do we then explain this very different phenotypic ratio that we're actually seeing in the F2 generation? It just so turns out that uh, an alternative hypothesis, which actually also happens to be the correct hypothesis, so going to the right after crossing or selfing the F1 generation, what happens is that um, the two pairs of alleles in the F1 generation actually segregate independently of each other during the formation of gametes. So in other words, the genes are packed into gametes in all possible allelic combinations, as long as each gamete has one allele for each character, so one allele for seed color and one allele for seed shape. So what I mean by that is those alleles, or let me just write that down right here. So this is the genotype of our F1 generation. So what Mendel observed is that all of these alleles, the capital R, the dominant R, the small r, the big Y, and the small y, they segregate independently of each other during the formation of gametes. So if this was an F1 plant, an F1 uh, uh, progeny, and gametes were being formed from this plant, each of these alleles would separate independently of each other and combine equally likely with either of the other pair. So, for instance, uh, the dominant allele for seed shape could combine with the dominant allele for seed color, for yellow seed color, to form an allelic pair that looks like that. Now, that dominant allele for seed shape could also combine with the recessive allele for seed color to form another 
gamete that looks something like that. Remember, we're talking about the formation of gametes here, gametogenesis. So the formation of eggs and sperm, or pollen in this case. Likewise, that small r, that recessive r, the recessive allele for seed shape, so the allele that produces wrinkled seeds, can combine with the dominant allele for seed color, that produces yellow color, to form yet another gamete with that combination of alleles. And it can also combine with that recessive allele for color, so both recessive alleles combining to form another genotype that looks like that. So what we have here, are, these are all the possible um, allele combinations that we can get in genotypes or in gametes that are formed from the F1 generation. And why we're saying this is true is because all of these alleles segregate independently of each other during, <clears throat> during the formation of gametes and they can combine on either member of one pair can combine with either member of another pair. So these are all the different allele combinations we're going to get in the gametes of the F1 generation. So what happens if we place these gametes in a Panet grid? So as you can see, we have um, that RY, capital R, capital Y, small r, capital Y, um, capital R, small y, and small r, small y. So all those four uh, genotypes in the gametes, and we cross them. So we take a male in the form of sperm or pollen that is from the F1 generation, so that has gametes with those uh, genotypes, so those combinations, those genotypic combinations of alleles, and we cross that male with another female that has eggs of the same combination of alleles, then we will produce a phenotypic ratio that looks something like this. Nine yellow, nine yellow round, three green round, three yellow wrinkled, and one green wrinkled. So that cross in which we're combining all those or all of these alleles in the Panet grid produces quite a number of different phenotypic combinations in the ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. The largest number coming from the most dominant phenotypes, so yellow and round, and then the green and round and the yellow and wrinkled each will have a ratio of 3. And then the recessive phenotype, green wrinkled seeds, will only have a ratio of of one. So we'll have nine yellow round, three green wrinkled, three yellow wrinkled, and one green wrinkled seeds. Now this phenotypic ratio confirmed Mendel's notion that alleles for one gene are sorted into gametes independently of the alleles of other genes. I'll repeat that. Alleles of one gene, okay, so for instance this is a gene right here, that's a gene determining um, set, uh, the shape of the seeds. They are sorted independently of the alleles of a, another gene, for instance that gene right there that determines the color of the seeds. So each of these alleles are sorted independently and they can combine with either member of another pair. And what Mendel did is that he tested several P characters in various dihybrid combinations like this one and he always observed the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. So what I want you guys to take note of, however, is the fact that there still is a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio if you consider each of these characters individually. So for instance, if we're looking at uh, all the different phenotypes we have produced here, if we strictly take the number of yellow versus the number of green, so the number of yellow seeds produced would be 9 plus 3, which is 12, and the number of green seeds produced would be 3 plus 1, which is 4 which is still a ratio of 3 to 1. Now, if it took the other uh, character that we are looking at in this case, which is uh, smooth versus wrinkled seeds, so we have 9 round um, and 3 round. So that's a total of 12 round shaped seeds. And we have 3 wrinkled and 1 wrinkled, so that's a total of 4 wrinkled seeds, which is still the phenotypic ratio of 3 to 1. So as far as single characters are concerned, the alleles segregate as if they were in a monohybrid cross. But because of the fact that we're looking at these uh, traits or these uh, characters in combination, then we are obtaining this dihybrid ratio, this ratio of 9 to 3, this phenotypic ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. So 
The result of this experiment, this entire experiment that Mendel performed, uh, is the basis of what we now call the law of independent assortment, which states that during gamete formation, each pair of alleles segregates independently of other pairs of alleles. Or you can say this in a different way. During gamete formation, a pair of alleles segregate and combine randomly with either member of another pair. So that pretty much in a nutshell uh, tells you what the law of independent assortment is. It's basically dealing with the independent uh, assortment of alleles of genes. So 